Welcome to Rotary and Serving Our Community. My name is Wade Nomura, and today we're going to take a look at uh, behind the scenes of Governor Jim Bell's life as a governor. Jim, how you doing? Doing well, Wade. Thank you. <laughs> good, good. And how's it feel to be uh, completed with your year? That's a big uh, smile, by the way. The, <laughs> the, when this pen went on, I've never <laughs> felt better. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. It's, uh, as you know, it's a, ba it's a big responsibility, and it's just really nice to now have some time to do what you wanted to do rather than be obligated to do so many things. <laughs> it's yeah. very true. Yeah. So uh, how about your family life? Is your wife getting used to you now that you're back home again? Or how's yes, that going? Uh, the wife and dog are, uh, <laughs> appreciate me a lot more now. Well, that's good. That is good. So um, what do you think? Uh, as a governor, the commitment of time, energy, was uh -huh. it what you thought it was going to be? Or was it more or less? You know, um, I think we all enter into this thinking we know what it's all about. But that's just not the case. I think it's completely different once you get into it because uh, there's a lot of commitments. There are a lot of ways to expand the commitments to make them even better. Uh, so I think you can build it to how you want it to be, but in the end, there's a lot going on, particularly the first six months out of the year. Very, very true. Yeah. Um, now, the commitment of time, energy, mm -hmm. Traveling, doing all the traveling, was that something that you had anticipated or was that a little bit more? I think you're schooled pretty well that what it's going to be. Um, in my case, uh, from June to June, just the one year as governor, it was about 24,000 road miles, 32,000 air miles, which actually surprised me. I didn't realize there would be so much of that, but it <laughs> also depends on where the conventions are and things. But yeah, I think you're pretty well schooled and you know how to, how to deal with that. What were some of the uh, highlights of the year? Highlights, well, uh, I think uh, the very first one was probably our district conference. Okay. We had uh, a lot of youth products uh, up on stage that, that, that we do in our district. Uh, I think the second one probably was the Rose Parade float, and uh, walking in the Rose Parade was a lot of fun with the, m my classmates. There were six or seven of us that walked in the Rose Parade, and that's... Uh, and the president. And the, and the <laughs> RI president was there <laughs> yeah, as well with his wife, uh, so that was pretty neat. Yeah. Uh, the next one would probably be the Foundation Gala with uh, okay. past RA President Bill Boyd right. and his wife. Uh, and the, the big one as, as a surprise was on uh, June 29th, I got an email. I'm, just as I'm beginning to hang up my spurs and get all done, <laughs> I get an email from uh, Rotary International saying you chartered a new club. So uh, that came on the next to the last day of the year. So it was a busy year all year long. That, that is great. Yeah, because yeah, uh, you're right. New clubs only occur... Maybe once every three years, four years Apparently, on the yes. average. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, that's great. Congratulations yeah. Thank on you. that. What do you think uh, the benefit that you got in Rotary as a mm -hmm. governor that you didn't anticipate? Boy, that's a really good question. Um, you really don't realize how much you don't know about Rotary and how much you don't know about your district until you do this. Uh, when you're visiting clubs every day, sometimes two or three clubs in a given day, it's your eyes, the, 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 the blinders just come off and you realize, yeah. gosh, uh, there's a lot of great Rotarians, a lot of great clubs out there. I mean, you just true. don't realize how, how much is going on in the district until you get out on the road and, and visit with these folks. That is true. Now, yeah. 74 clubs uh, 74 right clubs. Now. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you started 74, you ended with 74. That's right. We had one that merged in from We had one started. merged in Bakersfield, nice. uh, Bakersfield okay. South. Okay. Okay. Um, after 45, 50 years of, of serving the community, they just decided it was, it was getting too small. They decided to join some of the other clubs. So okay. that's all taken place. And then we added the new one. So good. Same number. Now, did uh, Donna, your wife, uh, get to participate on very many of these events? She trips? went to a lot of the uh, socials. Okay. Uh, probably visited about 35 to 40 percent of the clubs nice. with me. Oh, very good. And uh, really enjoyed it as well. I mean, it. It's an eye opener for her because she's not a Rotarian. So well, that and she's working full time working too. Working full time, that makes yeah. It kind of a challenge. Her uh, her employer was very kind oh, nice. and yeah. gave her a lot of spare time to go do things. So they're Good. they're both Rotarians in Bakersfield, by the way. <laughs> now I know one of the challenges you had, and um, I'm going to key in on one specific, mm -hmm. was uh, after a trip to Mexico. You've been kind of challenged there uh -huh. health wise. That that must have been a rough way to. Finish. It was a rough one. Uh, actually, I, I I caught a viral infection that really didn't have any medication for it so there was about six weeks that I was uh, running on maybe 10% or 20% of whatever energy yeah. I had and just had to work my way through it yeah so that that affected me about the middle of May it caused me to have to cancel my RI convention trip right. but other than that uh, 
the rest of the 11 months was great. The last <laughs> month was a little dicey. Well, actually, timing was good anyways. It had, had it happened anywhere else, you oh, probably would have had all kinds of challenges it, it with have, meetings right. and things yeah. like that. Uh -huh. Good. Uh, how about the trip to Mexico? Uh, aside from getting sick, was, yeah. how, how was that? Was well, that... I wasn't sick there. I was fine there. Yeah. But uh, it was another eye-opening trip because it was my third trip there, but I hadn't had an opportunity to get out into the uh, other parts of the, I think they call them states, correct? correct. So yeah. We, yeah. you and I actually went to uh, three or four cities in, a, in over a week or maybe five days and, and visited a lot of Rotarians and their clubs in Mexico, which is really eye-opening as well. Very, very wonderful experience. Warm and friendly Rotarians. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, <laughs> great. Really great. enjoyed it. Now, club-wise, um, I know there's a, a lot of events that the clubs organize do, both community-wise, club-wise, and district-wise. Mm -hmm. Which uh, of those stand out? You don't have to give names of the clubs because we don't want to offend too many people, but what events were kind of neat that you recall attending? Well, I think it, the, the, your, your year, a rotor. A Rotary District Governor's Year starts out pretty much with July 4th uh, parade in, in the city of Solvang, which is right. put on by the Rotary Club uh, there. And, of course, you have Buellton and other clubs that right. participate. That was really kind of neat. And then from there, you hit uh, Goleta Fireworks. Which and we then, just did a show for you, a while ago. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And uh, there are other events like that. There's a Santa Maria Christmas Parade that's fantastic. Right. There's uh, uh, some incredible fundraisers done by some of the uh, clubs in the Simi Valley, Thousand Oaks area. And of course, there's some uh, benchmark long-term events in Bakersfield. So when you try to incorporate all those, I don't say that one's better than the other. Sure. It's just amazing how many there are and how well they, and how long they've been you know, being produced by the Rotary Clubs. Fantastic community experiences, yes. Yeah, that, that is a good one. Uh -huh. Now, um, looking at the presidents, you have 74 clubs, you have uh -huh. 74 presidents. How close did you come to the presidents to get to know them, become friends with them? Um, some of them quite quite a bit. Some of them not so much. Uh, a lot of it has to do with distance sure. uh, and also the size of the club. Uh, who you really become fami uh, most familiar with, which I did not realize going in at the beginning of the year last year, was the assistant governors. Uh, the assistant governors travel with you uh, to the clubs in their group or region, I should say. And uh, it was just amazing how much work they, they do and how good they are at their jobs. And I really, really enjoyed that. But there are some really good club presidents you get to know as well. Yeah, that, that is true. Yeah. So the assistant governors, those are selected, usually um, selected by you as, mm -hmm. as, as the governor mm -hmm. to be kind of your go-between between them and the clubs mm -hmm. themselves. What kind of commitment do you think they have uh, time-wise? Uh, are they putting in quite a bit of time? Uh, they're, they're putting in quite a bit of time for a very short period of time. Okay. Uh, if you have your schedule, uh, let's just take the Santa Maria area, for example. You, uh, if you have uh, the clubs in that area run by one particular assistant governor, she only has or he only has three or four clubs to visit with me. Okay. And if you get those all done within a couple of days, the rest of their uh, year is, their, is, you know, is just having a once-a-month meeting, perhaps, and then keeping you up to date with what's happening. So it's, assistant governor uh, is intense for a very short period of time. Yeah. Except for they do monthly meetings still. Monthly though. meetings, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we don't want to play them down too much because they, they are definitely hard workers. Uh -huh. well, okay, good, good. Um, now, at the end of the year, we have a, an awards we uh, do. Award ceremony here, and you give out different things. Tell us about that. Well, um, we celebrate two things at the end of the year. We have the district governor step down and also the district awards at the same event. And this year I chose the theme of Country Western like I did for the district conference and everybody dressed in Western gear. And uh, we, we have a lot of awards that the clubs earn just by doing what they normally do all year long. And then of course we have a few awards that uh, I'm allowed to uh, present to certain people who have stood out uh, over time. And then of course at the very end we pick a, a few of the uh, best small, medium, and large club overall and then the overall club. Okay. Mm -hmm. now, now tell me about this. I know some of the Rotarians, we, we hear back from them saying that, you know, it's, it's not about the awards, we do it because of this. Mm -hmm. Now, now that you've gone through the actual awards process, mm -hmm. tell me about how that affects the clubs and why you feel we yeah. keep giving the awards out. Well, um, my personal view is all human beings relish acknowledgement, whether they want to admit it or not. <laughs> So what we're really doing in the at district awards 
is giving those clubs the recognition that they earn just by doing what they normally do. There's a, for example, there's a presidential citation, uh, gold, silver, and bronze. Those are things that clubs normally do throughout the course of the year if they just check mark that they did them off the presidential, or the RI president's list, they get an award. So uh, now it's an interna international award. That's there. an international, that's exactly nice. right. Yeah. So we do the same thing at the district level. Okay. So we have two or three ways to honor our clubs. Uh, it's really not at that level. It's not, in my view, a competitive situation. Sure. It's just a acknowledgement of all the hard work they do in their communities and uh, you know perhaps overseas as well on the international side. Good, good. Yeah, let's jump into the awards. Okay, since you got a few pictures here, I do. Starting with the first one, uh, I'll let you go through that one there. It uh, looks like uh, one of the best clubs. The uh, best club is this year, well, the best overall club this year was the Rotary Club of Cambria. Okay. And cool. you'll see a picture there of Joan Broadhurst okay. holding the award. And what would you uh, say was one of their major accomplishments? What made them stand out? Uh, there's too many to mention. <laughs> there's way too many to mention in that just, particular just case. Just a highly active club. Oh, it's an extremely it. active club. Okay. Great. And, a, and uh, a fun club to visit, frankly. It's a lot of fun. Very true, yeah. Next picture we have shows the uh, best clubs in the three size categories. That's exactly right. right. Uh, next to me, I'm the one, the one in the white hat, <laughs> is uh, Mike Murphy from the uh, Rotary Club of Thousand Oaks. Next to Mike, which is the best large club, by the way, yep. is the best small club, which is Donna Archer, okay. Rotary Club of Cayuca Seaside. Mm -hmm. And then finally, uh, Jenny Hayward, the uh, best medium-sized club, which is uh, Simi Valley. Great, and so, that is a perpetual trophy that goes on each year then. And it's a big and heavy one, too. It is a big and heavy one. <laughs> Okay, next picture we have is? Uh, Rob Godfrey mm -hmm. is uh, this year's uh, District Rotarian of the Year. Wow. He was our district treasurer mm -hmm. and has been our district treasurer for five years. Right. And uh, I could not have operated without him, and I think the previous governors would probably say the same thing. He's a very hardworking guy behind the scenes and mm -hmm. does an amazing job. Very true. Yeah. Yep, great. Next picture we have? I think that is Donna Archer, like best. Donna uh, there, yeah. Yes, that's the best uh, small club. Okay. She's the president of our, our Cayuca Seaside. Uh huh. And the next one after that would be, I think. Yes. Okay. This is an interesting award. This was a uh, spouse award. Okay. And uh, this is an RI award that is not given out every year, but uh, in this particular case, this is Scotty Ortiz, uh -huh. who is the wife of past district governor Frank Ortiz in uh, Rodeo Club of Santa Maria Breakfast. And we caught her completely off guard and she was very, very uh, surprised. Great, yeah. tell us a little bit about her award and uh, what, did, what did you see there on the uh, application that's did? There's, uh, well, there's a lot of community service with respect yeah. to CASA particularly sure. in, in her life. Uh, several other community organizations in Santa Maria, uh, not to mention uh, there's been international trips with Frank right. uh, in many different uh, countries. Mm -hmm. So she's, uh, she's a trooper, Great. she's right there. Sounds good. Uh -huh. Next picture we have is uh, Luz Maria. Luz Maria. Uh, this was the, um, I forget which one is Citation? This? Yeah, Citation for, Meritorious for service, service, which is, uh, I think you have to have, what, five years or something five, in? Yeah. And then uh, we gave that to her this year. She's the District Rotarian um, DRFCC, which is the- District, yeah, Rotary Foundation chair. Committee Chair. Committee Chair, that's right. Yeah, so yeah. And she's done, uh, done that position for the past three years. Done a great job. She's done a great job. Actually, and she you're went following her. Yeah. <laughs> she went before that too because she was a transitional ah, person. Okay. So she had about a year or two training even before she jumped in. So uh -huh. definitely well deserved. The next picture we have is I think it's Doug Hoffman Doug coming Hoffman, up. Doug Hoffman, right? Doug Hoffman yeah. was uh, given the uh, and this is really an interesting one by the way. He was given the John uh, Padilla Humanitarian, no, I'm sorry, he was given the Jock McKinsey Leadership Award. Right. And the funny story on, on Doug is, after all the years he's helped uh, with teaching at Pearls and such, he came up to me after receiving the award and said, you know, I helped write the criteria for this award 11 years ago, and I didn't think I'd ever earn it. <laughs> and I, he was so, so warm and, and just stunned that he, that he got it. it, just, it was, and he's been very... Uh, uh, Dicey on his health in the last yeah, three or four yeah. years, and he's finally through that. So it was just a great, 
a great event. That's a huge one because yeah. he's not always been recognized. He was one of those behind the scenes workers. Behind the scenes lot. guys. Nobody even knows he's back there. Exactly. Yeah. Next picture is, uh, I think it's Virginia Hayward and Rocky Rhodes right. from uh, Simi Valley Club. Now, this was the John Padilla Humanitarian Service Award. And in this particular case, Rocky donated a kidney to another Rotarian who was literally going to die if he didn't get a match and he, in his club. Hmm. I mean, this is uh, way above and beyond. Wow. So uh, it, it just fits so well. Yeah, definitely so. That's a great one. Next one you have is uh, say David Gore there. Yes, it is. David Gore um, received the Sam L. Green Service Above Self Award and uh, caught him off guard as well. <laughs> David has been uh, not only a good friend, but just a really, really hard worker, and particularly in the education and training areas of our district for many years. Right. And uh, it was time for him to win this award. Yeah, it really was. Very good. Oh, that was good. Since he's moving on now, I guess. Uh, moving on to grants, doing I guess. Doing grants, correct. The next person that's on the screen, or should be soon, would be Scott Phillips. Mm -hmm. And this was a new award we gave this year called the Quiet Rotarian Award. The Quiet Rotarian is those people that work behind the scenes, uh, unbeknownst to many people, and just fulfill a position and do a great job. And we gave that award to Scott Phillips and also Neil Walker oh, okay. uh, for both working together and doing the district governor's new newsletter oh. month after month after month. So there's two of them, actually. There's two of them, With exactly. With the same award, getting the same award. Get, got, both got the same award. Name uh, is the same Neil award. was on vacation, was not there. Scott okay. was. That's why you see the picture great. of just and Scott. And by the way, Scott's going to be a, well, he's a president right now. He starts uh, next uh, Tuesday, I think. Uh, he's actually started. Yeah, <laughs> as club president. That's exactly yeah, yeah. right. Because he was at the 4th of July show. Oh, that's right. That's right. But that yeah. is a good one. I, now, how'd you come up with that award? That's well, a great I wanted award. to give them an award, uh, and I didn't. There isn't. There wasn't a title of an award, so we had to come up with one. So we just okay. made up a name, no, that, and it fits. That, that is, it definitely fits. Yeah, it definitely fits. Perfect. Next picture we have is. Uh, I think you're going to see about ten people up on stage yeah, or so, and yeah. that is the uh, a new award by Rotary this year called the Club Builder Award, recognizing Rotarians who've made a, a significant impact in building their club in some manner or okay. shape and uh, strengthening their club. And those are, the, th those are the 10 winners right there. Got it. Give me a little example of some of the things that uh, was the criteria that was met. One of the, one of the criteria is membership. Okay. So if they worked on the membership side and, and uh, solidified either on the front end or the back end of the membership criteria, in other words, uh, retention or mm -hmm. attraction, okay. uh, they were considered. Good. And uh, these, every one of these folks stood out. It was awesome. Very nice. Next picture we have is... You have uh, Rotaract, the Rotaract. Right? There are five Rotaract clubs that got awards, and uh, those are your Rotaract presidents there. Okay. Receiving the award for yeah. uh, doing an amazing job this year. I see. So the two on the end are sharing because I see six people up there. That's right. That's exactly <laughs> right. Okay. Um, the clubs, do you remember offhand where they're located at? The, the, Rot the Rotaract the clubs? The Rotaract clubs. Uh, Santa Maria, mm -hmm. uh, Bakersfield. Uh, right here in uh, Channel Islands, uh, Thousand Oaks area, and Santa Barbara. Okay. There's five of them. Got it. Very good. Mm -hmm. And the next picture? We did Interact Awards this year okay. and recognized, I think there were f three or four clubs that did some outstanding community service and helping their Rotary Clubs in their areas do uh, bigger and better events. Okay. So we gave those awards to Interact this, this Interact. year. Which is staying with the theme I had for the year, which is Youth Services. Okay. And... Okay. Uh, that's what we featured at our district conference, and that's what we wanted to also continue on with the district awards. Got it. Yeah. Now, Interact, um, high school age, correct? Most high school age. Uh, right through senior. Yeah, exactly right. Okay. And then they, uh, at that, at, at 17 or 18, they'll go on to college and then hopefully move into Rotaract. Right. It sounds like uh, they listened to the memo. Most of them dressed in the Western thing. <laughs> yeah, they all had fun. <laughs> yeah, good, good. The next picture you're going to see, I believe, is... Uh, our district governor elect, now district governor, now governor. Uh, Nick Frankel in that white hat, pinning the district governor nominee, who is now district governor elect, John Weiss. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, of course, standing behind the white shirt is now the new district governor nominee, Sandy Schwartz. Okay. Uh, so it's a district governor transition is the very last thing we do at the district awards. Let's give them the locations, uh, the audience out there. Okay. So. Nick, uh, the current district governor today, mm -hmm is from uh, the Westlake Village Sunrise Club. Okay. 
John Weiss is uh, Rotary Club of Morro Bay, mm -hmm. and District Governor nominee Sandy Schwartz is Bakersfield East Rotary Club. Great. So you got the whole district covered. Yep. I think that's kind of neat that you have it set up that way. Yeah. Worked out well for us. And I think you have one more picture. One more picture there. And that is uh, me giving District Governor, now District Governor Nick Frankel, his own gavel. So he gets his own gavel <laughs> okay. for, the, for the district bell. And that's right. <laughs> now we still have the bell I see back there, so that was yes, good. Yes, exactly right. <laughs> so he's, uh, he's receiving that. That's great. Yeah. And that is a good he's one. He's very excited, I, mean, I have to tell you. <laughs> now we got a few more pictures here, starting with this one. Uh, looks like uh, something that... You may have planned yeah, on this one. Yeah, we did here. that. It we has did a that. little bit of gym. The, okay, on that the, one. the history on this is the <laughs> district governor, uh, the district gov the home club of the governor gets a banner, which says "Home Club of the District Governor, Rotary District 5240" on it, and they display that banner 52 weeks while you're not there, pretty much, because you're out on the road doing things. I guess it's a reminder that you're still a member. <laughs> 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 well, anyhow, I asked my club president when he's bringing the banner to the district awards to pass on to Nick's club, hit that president, find a way to perhaps make a, a fake banner and tear it. <laughs> so as you're going up the steps, you trip and fall, and all of a sudden, oh my gosh, I have this banner, this beautiful banner that's torn. And that's what you see there. The real okay. banner was not torn, it obviously. Was, it was a prop banner. <laughs> but what caught me off guard in this particular case, as he's passing the banner, he milked this thing for probably three minutes, <laughs> and I'm sitting there, bullets of sweat going down. Is it the real banner? <laughs> he did a great job. He was so funny. That's uh, President Anselmo. Anselmo, yeah. yeah. By the way, he had a great year. Didn't he had he? a fantastic yeah, year. Yeah, great Absolutely year. great year. Pretty hard to uh, stand up to the uh, governor when he's from your club, so <laughs> he did a good job. He did a great job. <laughs> the next picture is the actual real banner. Actual re -ban real banner being held by um, uh, Nancy Lasota okay. from Nick's Club. And uh, that's what that's uh, in his club right now on display, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. And then the uh, final picture we have there. Well, that's myself and Donna. <laughs> As uh, we, we were in character that day, uh, having that. fun. And uh, she enjoyed that very much and I think uh, looked great in her Western outfit. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Poor Donna, she's going to see this on TV and go, well, really? Exactly. <laughs> I don't good. think I told her I was coming today, by the way. So oh, she, you know, we'll, we'll surprise her. It'll be a good surprise. <laughs> That's great. So we have a little bit more time. Let's, okay. Let's talk some more about your year. Okay. What were, uh, tell us some of the interesting stories. A, a good story of uh, something that happened on one of your trips that you had oh, anticipated. Oh, boy. There's, there's a lot of those. I, know uh, <laughs> I'll, I can tell you one that, that really stands out. I was at the Rotary Club of Paso Robles okay. that... Um, has a very nice reception the night before at Eberly Wineries because he's part of that club. And a gentleman came up to me I had never met before and, and said, what are you doing tomorrow morning? And I went, nothing. He goes, I'm going to come by at your hotel and pick you up at 8 o'clock and, and take you uh, on a ride. Uh, we ended up, he, which he did, by the way, we ended up about 15 miles up uh, uh, an old road in the mountains of Paso Robles <laughs> overlooking the ocean to a house his father built for just under $2 million in 1988. Wow. And he bought, the, he bought the property from the Hearsts. And this is a five-story house. The bottom story is an indoor swimming pool. Uh, and it just continues from there. It's just amazing, built in the side of the, the highest peak in that area. Wow. And there's a 50-mile view of the coastline 10 miles out. <laughs> and the reason it's, ten, it's actually 10.1 miles out, because 10 miles out, 10 miles inland, the Coastal Commission has control of what you build. <laughs> His dad was smart enough to figure out. He well, edged it out. We then. edged it back this way. We could do what we want. So oh, it, amazing, nice. amazing story. He's, uh, he owns his own company in Paso Robles that makes uh, light bulbs like in the studio here. Oh, okay. So very, yeah. very interesting uh, gentleman. That, that is. That's uh, a good, that is a good just story. Just little things like that <laughs> happen, and you just don't know when they're going to happen. So tell me about one of the most unique fundraisers you uh, observed or participated in this year? Well, I think the most unique one, uh, well, first I should say our district has a lot of fantastic, uh, many of which are long-term fundraisers in, in some of the, uh, I mean, some have been going on for 20 or 25 years. The most unique one, I think, was in my own club because they started, President Anselmo came up with this new idea this year to do a beer pong tournament. <laughs> and I wasn't really quite sure what I was getting involved with, uh, but it didn't matter. It, it, was, it was just mobbed with a lot of 20 and 25 and 30-year-old uh, young people who just 
they were amazing to watch these teams play. I mean, it was really, really fascinating. So, so those are probably the pros on the beer pong tour. I think so. You got you to get that. You got to get that <laughs> now, ball now you in there. You may want to point out that it was called beer pong. It was called beer pong. Right. But the actual liquid was beer. Yeah, it was beer. <laughs> Sorry. No, no problem. <laughs> Just check it. It was. It was, it. it was at a uh, one of those. Uh, it was called Timbler, which okay. is one of those uh, unique beer-making places in Bakersfield. Oh. Brand new, actually. Okay. It's been open about six months, so it was good for them and good for us as well. Got it. Good exposure. Real quick story. Tell me something that happened to you that you couldn't fix. I couldn't fix. I couldn't fix. In other words, a trip that went bad. A trip something went the wrong way. You didn't do, have any of those? I don't oh, think I had any. I, I, th I think I had. I, I was pretty good. Hero. I think so I had you, some pretty good. So ones. you never got turned to the wrong direction. You never showed up where. No, but oh, I, I did have an issue getting out of here. Mexico. I can tell you that real quickly. <laughs> uh, for some reason, I don't know what the issue was, but getting on the plane, they, I had to almost do a strip shirt. Oh, really? I mean, it was amazing. This guy wanted to look. He had everything out of the suitcases, everything out of the backpack, wow. everything. Wow. And uh, one of our Rotarians was standing there watching me from uh, uh, one of the clubs, Lompo Club. Uh -huh. Took pictures. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You're not supposed to have cameras out there. He's I know, looking, he I, was the next one in line. He thought he was being line. funny. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So nothing. I can't, I can't yeah. believe that. Yeah. Got yeah. lucky. You're probably the first. Ah. Yeah. yeah. We'll have to take some notes and see how you got that one pulled off. Car-wise, how many car miles do you figure you went? And did you wear out a car? I didn't wear out a car. I actually drive an F-150, so okay. uh, 24,000 June to June. Uh, of course, the, the assignment takes you back another couple years, so it's a lot sure, more than that, sure. but just in one year, 24000 Okay. Yeah. Now, suitcase. You still have a suitcase packed? No. <laughs> really? I don't know. I had really? a suitcase packed for the longest time, but now I've <laughs> taken, it, taken it apart. Real quick, sure. uh, looking at future, what, what do you see in, in the future for yourself as a past district governor? You know, I just want to see uh, the, the, the governors following me and the next one just to, to all help each other out, good continuity. I'll do anything I can to make that as smooth as possible. I just want to uh, offer up whatever I, I've learned and to help them when asked. I don't, don't want to tell anybody what to do, but just say, hey, you know, I'm here to help you. Great. Well, thank you very much for your time. Great. I sure appreciate And for Enjoy your service. Yeah, I appreciate year, that. Your lifetime you. for Rotary. Well, you started it, out. by the way, <laughs> no with comment. me. We're going to cut at that point there. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, talking to Jim Ballot was one outstanding year he's had. And with that, we will see you next time. Thank you.